enjoy part one of my interview with economist Paul Zane Pilzer. Riveting information. Now, Paul is going to share some strategies with you about where he puts his own money, what his thoughts are about how to take existing wealth and grow it and create cash flow from it. He's done it, so it's not abstract. It's something he's actually put on the ground and made work in his own life, and I think it's very compelling. So enjoy my part two interview with Paul St. Pilzer. Paul, thanks for sitting down with us again. I'm really looking forward to continuing our conversation. Thank you. It's always great to be here with you, Patrick. So you're the only person in the world who's ever made economics completely fascinating to me. <laughs> so, you know, just whenever you were giving presentations, giving your lectures, you know, you really have these very stimulating thoughts about the economy and you kind of talk about varying aspects of economics that when you read them in, in uh, your professional papers, they seem very boring, but when you talk about them, they seem very, uh, how can I put it, uh, applicable to my life. <laughs> so now what I want to talk about, and it's something that I've been watching you do you know, over the past years, is saying, hmm, if I've got some money to invest and I need to create cash flow in my life, like what are some ways to do that? You yourself, I guess we talk about it, the fact that you own some Planet Fitness franchises, for example. What was it that caused you to say, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go invest in some of these franchises and create uh, cash flow from that? Well, frankly, I, like most things, it was happenstance, mm -hmm. or I might call it a happy accident, yeah. that got me to Planet Fitness. So let me tell you how I got into Planet Fitness, and then we'll come back to your main question which is uh, why Planet Fitness versus other businesses. Mm -hmm. um, in 1991, I didn't know this, I was on Larry King Live TV show, that I knew, mm -hmm. and watching was the founder of Planet Fitness. But he wasn't yet the founder, founder of Planet Fitness. He was a person with a, frankly, dying gym. Mm -hmm. And he watched me, went out and bought my book, Unlimited Wealth, and used that book as a Bible. His friends joke, it's the only book he ever read. <laughs> and he used that book as his Bible and built Planet Fitness into a then 200 store chain of fitness chain, gyms. Mm -hmm. And it was a fascinating model how he built Planet. Uh, at the time, every gym had an average of about 1,500 members. Mm -hmm. Gold's Gym, 24 Hour Fitness, you remember the gyms that were around Bally's. And at 1,500 members, you barely break even. Right. If you can get to 1,600, 1,700, 1,800, it's all profit because it's a heavy fixed cost business. Right. And that was the gym business. Mm -hmm. And he figured out, not mathematically like I did later on, but he figured out that the right business was to build a gym for 8,000 members. Mm -hmm. Don't fight with every other gym going 1,500, 1,600. Retool the whole engineering process of the gym from signing on the customers using modern technology and iPads, mm -hmm. make it paperless, make all the money collection paper list called electronic funds transfer from your checking account. And he built Planet Fitness in a very successful business. Wow. In 2010, he had his first convention in Las Vegas. Mm. And he was very excited to be bringing together the 200 franchises he had gone around the country and recruited. He said, you know, I want for my keynote speaker, I want Paul Pilzer. <laughs> so he hired me as the speaker. And I got very involved with the company. I thought it was a terrific model. People could join a gym for 10 bucks a month and do something about their wellness. Very exciting model. But then once I became known for Planet Fitness as the speaker at their convention and all that goes viral and I'm all over the web as someone speaking about Planet Fitness, people start coming up to me and my family members and saying, wow, Paul owns Planet Fitness. <laughs> and my wife would say, no, we don't own Planet Fitness. Paul's just a paid speaker. But that didn't matter. For everyone she told that to, there were thousands of people who thought Paul owns Planet Fitness because he's all over the web speaking about Planet Fitness. I said to my wife, Lisa, you got me nervous here. They're using my name, they're using my likeness. I like the company, but I don't know anything about it. They've been inviting me for a year now to come visit them at their headquarters in New Hampshire. Why don't you take off, fly to New Hampshire, meet the management team, meet, more important, some of the franchisees, and make sure this is legitimate. She goes, great. Takes off in New Hampshire. She comes back, she bought a five-store area development agreement <laughs> for Salt Lake City, Utah Without consulting you first? to build stores. Well, she made the deal and signed it, but she saw an opportunity and said, this is a great business. Right. People want to lose weight and they need an affordable gym that's honest and lets them quit any time. Right. No commitment, 10 bucks a month, what could be simpler? Right. That's how I got into the Planet Fitness gyms. Wow. So Planet Fitness is exciting to me as a mathematician and economist mm -hmm. because of the way in which the business works. 
If you remember back in high school when you studied quadratic equations, there were two solutions. And one was considered a ridiculous solution, and one was the right solution, and you had to look at which one was practical and throw out the wrong solution. I've always looked at the wrong solution, which is mathematically correct, solves the problem, as maybe that's the answer. Uh -huh. And a good example of a wrong solution would be Galileo, who looked up at the heavens. Back in the time of Galileo, what could you possibly believe if you looked outside, except that the Earth is the center of the universe, and the sun comes up over here and revolves this way mm -hmm. around the Earth. Right. And the moon and all the planets revolve around the stationary Earth. It's wrong, but it's so obvious. Right. And it became our calendar for 5,000 years till Galileo invented the telescope and proved that wrong. Similarly, in a lot of businesses in mathematics, everybody's trying to linearly grow. And in Planet Fitness in the gym business, people are trying to grow from 1,500 members a club to 1,550 to 1,600. Mm -hmm. And the right answer is throw everything you know out about running a 1,500 member club, retool the whole organization for eight to 10,000 members, then go out and get eight to 10,000 members in your gym by low price, honest dealing, and all the good things that go with Planet Fitness. Mm -hmm. So as an economist and a speaker, I was interested in Planet Fitness and became much more interested when my wife started to say, we're gonna open gyms in our business right. here in Utah where we live and we're going to use this as a model she said to teach our children that retail stores and businesses don't just exist mm -hmm. somebody takes a piece of land builds a building mm -hmm. rents to the people and really works very hard to give someone a great experience mm -hmm. but personally as a head of household which is actually what economist means economics literally means a household and economics is the study of a head of household or a householder back in biblical times. I had no idea. It's the first time I ever heard that. The word Greek economics means household or manager of a household. Wow. Okay. So I'm also, in addition to being an economist and a speaker, I'm a householder. <laughs> I have to pay bills like everybody else. I have to worry that I'm going to make enough money going forward for four children who are now in high school to go off to college. I have to worry about where I might live when I retire and mm -hmm. make investments. And as a head of household, or as a business person, I like Planet Fitness very much because it's primarily a cash flow business. Mm -hmm. You open a business like Planet Fitness, you invest roughly about two and a half million dollars to three million in a store, mm -hmm. and if everything goes well and it works, which most of them obviously do, uh, you're gonna make about a million dollars cash flow a year. Something they say in their offering last I saw, 600,000 to 800,000, but a good successful operator I know can make about a million a year profit per store. Okay. And I had never had businesses like that. Being a tech entrepreneur and an economist, I had always built businesses that served a customer with a product, and along came somebody who wanted it more than I did, or I wanted to play with some other toys, and they said, we'll buy this from you. Right. So my life, financially, since I left Citibank in 1981, that was my last salary. Mm -hmm. The last time I got a monthly check to live on was 1981, right. when I left Citibank and went out on my own as an entrepreneur. And for better or worse, all of my businesses as an entrepreneur were about initially real estate, buying some land, building something, getting it leased up. And before I could enjoy it, somebody would offer me more money than I thought it was worth. And I would take the money and go off and do something else. Mm -hmm. So my career from 1981 till 2010 was all about building businesses, not owning businesses. Planet was very different. Planet was a successful franchise, then with 200 stores, today about 1,500 stores. Wow. And Planet was a business that you primarily invested for good cash flow. Mm -hmm. Very taxable, but cash flow. You put in two and a half million and you can earn roughly a 35 to 45% return in monthly cash flow. Right. And that was exciting to me and something that fit the time of my life because I started entering my 60s, I'm 64 years old today, and I look at businesses as not what will this business do for the future 10, 20 years from now, what will this business do next year, next year, next year? Because I like having cash flow coming in. And Planet was really the first business I ever did that brought me current cash. Mm -hmm. And that opened up a whole new world of investing because investing to me was always about growth and multiplying two, three, four X your capital. And this is what's interesting. So you make a distinction between uh, phases of life and type of investment that would kind of match with where you are. Absolutely. And that's what we in economics call the utility curve. Utility curve. Let's assume you and I are identical. We certainly have the same hairstyle. <laughs> we certainly have kids who love each other. We have lots of things in common. Right. But how would two smart people do business together mm -hmm. if we have so much in common? What are we going to bring to the table? Mm -hmm. Well, you might have 10 apples and I have 10 oranges. You see right away how even though we're identical in thinking, we value the, everything the same, 
you don't value oranges the same as I value apples mm -hmm. because we can do a switch. Right. And a utility curve is in utils, literally we use the word util, how much you value each additional apple. Mm -hmm. If you've got 10, not many, right. you want an orange. But once you've got 10 oranges, you want more apples. <laughs>